animals and human beings, the butchers and Sherpas, uh, so it's a kind of uh, mutes. On the great Tibetan south route, they meet me again, old forsaken friends. On their faces, fatigue of a drunken sleep. Their lives worn out, their legs twisted, shaking from carrying lustrous flags of bleeding ascents. Age-long bells killing into them like festering wounds, beating notes of a slavery that modernism brings, cartons of iceberg, mineral water bottles, solar heaters, Chinese styles, tin cans, carom boats, sacks of rice, and iodized salt from the plains of Nepal Tarai. Butterflies of the terrace fields know their names, singing brooks, tempests of their breathless climbs, traffic alert and time tested, they climb, carrying dreams of past peacocks, pamphlets of a secret religious war, filth of an ecologist trial semen, entire kitchen for a cocktail party at the base camp, defunct development agendas of guilty donors, the West's weird visions lusting for an instant purge. Stone steps of the mountains embossed on their drugged brains like, like lines of imported love scratched on the historic ropes of the water spouts. Starry skies of the dozing valleys know the ache of their secret sweat. Sunny days along the crystal rivers taste of their bleeding eyes. And the greatest fiction of their struggling lives goes like real mules collecting their hooves on the flagstones encircling the cruel grandeur of the thirsty mule paths around the glaciers of Annapurna. Mm -hmm. Annapurna is a place where, uh, you know, in Himalayas, uh, uh, we celebrate it as a place where soul of a god lives. So Himalayas, uh, Sanskrit, we have a word called Devatatma, meaning place where soul of the god lives. The Tibetan word for him Everest is Chomulungma, mm -hmm. meaning mother of the wind of the world. Mm -hmm. And the Nepali word for Everest is uh, Sagarmatha, meaning forehead of the sky. Uh, Everest is a British guy's name who in the colonial times tried to see if Everest is the highest mother of the world. So nobody knows the Nepali name, we all know British name. Uh, British are very good to us, they come and change everything and go. <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows us uh, about us. So this poem I want to read is uh, the poem that has a reference to a little paradise lodge. It is a reference to Himalayas, uh, this word Devadatma. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a little story about this. I, I trek in the mountain all the time. So I was once trekking after seventh or eighth day. You know, it's so dumb. <coughs> it's really terrible. It's like people think it's very romantic. It's pretty tiring. And you go up, it's, it's dangerous. You can fall off the cliff and end up in a little speck. So I was up there, and I met this German lady. She said, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a poet, and I guess what I do for a living. And she said, well, then you got to go to the top of this mountain. She dragged me all the way. It was getting dark, and it mountain is dangerous. She said, nine, nine, you know, German mute, strong lady. And I said, all right, you know, why not? So I, I followed her. It took us three hours to go on the top. And there's nothing there. There's a small shack, a little lodge. And uh, I said, well, why do you bring me here? So, and then she said, no, you got to stay here. So I, I, she put me up, I checked in this little lodge. And, and they put me in, and she wants to leave. I said, come and stay here. She said, nine, nine, I got to go. And she goes in the dark and dangerous <laughs> forest. <laughs> anyway, I'm left there, and in the middle of the night, I, I, I asked this guy, and he was drunk, the owner. <laughs> and his wife is making local wine. And there's a huge Tibetan massacre, big dog. So I see this, I'm in big trouble here. <laughs> and they give me outside a room where I have to stay. And then uh, they tell me uh, that, I said, would you please tie the dog? Because I'm afraid of the dog. Uh, I, I was beating my dog when I was small. He might come at me at night when I go to the toilet. It's always open. So, and I, he said, no, sir, he's okay. You go, he will do nothing to you. Come on. I said, well, please tie the dog. I'm, I'm afraid. He says, sir, just don't worry. Enjoy, sleep. Mm. I said, I can sleep unless I have this dog. He said, well, he will do nothing to you because uh, uh, he is afraid of the tiger who comes at night. <laughs> I said, what? There's a tiger outside? <laughs> his mother and his grandmother was eaten by the tiger. <laughs> so he is very afraid. He won't come out. No <laughs> and I'm outside. I have a room. <laughs> so and I, I was so upset. And I, all night I was shaking. I woke up in the morning. And in the morning I saw, I came out and I saw all around me these beautiful glaciers. 
I was in paradise and flower and you know all this. I was in, in a paradise of snow. And uh, it's just uh, this poem I wrote that I'm reading. <laughs> Little paradise knowledge. My pen frozen against the daggers of Annapurna's. I'm in a long shapeless plank chopped from a sandalwood tree trunk and used as a table. I place my elbows and hold my face in my hands. Blinding snows of the Annapurna ridge hugely shining in the eye of my mind. I sit in the spacious courtyard of your paradise lodge. Deciphering shrill notes of birds in the mossy trees. One bird initiates a lilting note like our meeting, while others let loose a racket of breath vessels ending with Christian tags. Can I stay longer? <laughs> At least one more day in your little paradise lodge. Two birds playing in the crimson cherry tree steal a chord that seems like opening up of the blossoms of our bodies. Would you take me away and marry me? But what about this electric whistle? This cicada's constant cheer, cheer, cheer. The struggle of our breathless bodies against the dark suit of the night. The pigeons strutting freely in your courtyard, cool like exhausted porters, climbing the mule paths in their singing gorges. Their guttural quack 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 They seem to be using a human language. A kind of hush speech robbers like you. Love, in the courtyard of your little paradise lodge, I see silence turning flowers into daggers. A herd of cows shovels past me in a joyous mood, festive like young girls going to a hillside fair, saying, don't you go away, brother, don't you go away, we will be back until dusk with prisons. A couple passes overhead, it's this thing, caw, 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 please. Do not leave me alone. I'm utterly alone, stuck on the last mountain of the world. And beyond me, just one more mountain, where they say a deity lives, guarding a tiny turf asleep. And thereafter, nothing but realm of melting snows, where souls of the gods live. Mm -hmm.